Hi, Mr. Chambers here. I'm going to give you a few tips on using crosshatch with your pencil. Okay, everybody, I'm going to show you a few tricks on uh, shading with crosshatching. Uh, just a few of the supplies I have. I have my little bowl for my pencil shavings. Move that off to the side. Um, I have a kneaded eraser, which you clean by stretching it out like that. And it becomes good as new. Um, eraser is good for pressing on like that or making a point and you can get a point to erase. Um, this is an Alvin brand uh, brass bullet pencil sharpener. Uh, it works great. I'll show you. Just uh, hold it. Get a really sharp point. And then uh, I have the two pencils here. I have, uh, this is a 2H and this is a 6B. So first thing I'm going to do is um, sharpen my 6B to get a nice fine point. So that's pretty good. Okay. All right, essentially the thing that I was teaching in class was um, the three points of using cross hatching was one is to be patient, to have a gentle touch, and uh, to understand light and shadow. Um, we've talked a lot about light and shadow, but basically when you're shading with um, crosshatch or with anything, you can get a really sharp point by holding it near the tip and pressing down. I'm sorry, a really dark tone. If I hold, do the same tone and I hold it back here and try to shade, and I'm going to press just as hard, see the different tone and value? You can get too dark and it's hard to have a fine line. If I hold it further away at the tip, I can go very delicately and do much lighter. I mean, really light. If I hold it here at the tip, I can, uh, I can try to get light, but I'm, I'm working extra hard because I'm trying not to have my hands pressure, the weight of my hand be on the table. Um, back here, I'm letting the weight of the pencil, which is very light, obviously, just work. Okay, so that's one difference. So starting with my number 2H two, two pencil, I'm going to start shading along this edge here. So watch, I'm just going to move my hand and I'm uh, holding it about halfway between the point and the other end of the pencil. I'm going to move it further away actually. And I'm starting here and going out there. I'm, I'm kind of lifting off the paper right here. And then when I can't reach any further, I move my hand and do it again. I'm not too worried about um, being perfect. The thing I'm concerning myself with right now is that I'm starting along this edge. Okay, I'm not, you know, starting an inch, you know, a quarter inch away from it. I'm starting at the edge. But again, I'm starting right where the shadow is, where it meets the ball. Um, again, just holding it not right at the tip. I'm feathering off. Just continue. Because I know that eventually with all a bunch of layers of um, pencil, I will have the different values that I'm aiming for. Okay, so you can see I'm kind of having a light and dark, I'm sorry, light and dark here. And let's just say my highlight's going to be somewhere right about there. I don't want to draw that too dark though. I might go the other direction. And my shadow, um, generally the shadow is not going to be a really hard edge, this edge here, depending on the kind of light source you have. And now my goal is to go from this shadow and half tone in here so that it gradually gets it light as that um, highlight.
See how fine those lines are? A gentle pencil is what we're talking about. Now maybe turn it this way a little bit. Wherever you have the most layers is, is going to be where it's darker. So if you have one layer, it's going to be very light. And the lighter you hold your pencil, the lighter that single layer will be. Now what I'm doing, I'm overlapping the cast shadow with the ball because I want to bring these two values closer together. So you see I'm starting out here and going, I'm starting here and moving in. Because I want the cast shadow to be darker, but I also want to darken the bottom of the ball. The light is coming from here and bouncing on the table and bouncing into here. So it's coming here, bouncing here, and into the ball. So it's going to be lighter down here than it will be up there. You see, I'm just, uh, what I'm doing is I'm establishing the shadow a little bit richer. Notice how I'm always feathering off into the light. The cast shadow, should it be here or here? This is closest to the light, see? So I'm going to darken this just a little bit. This is kind of a hard edge right here, so I'm going to soften that a little bit. Kind of go up. What did we say about the reflected light? The reflected light, the value of it cannot be lighter than the um, light mass, right? Okay. So I'm going to put that dark shadow in here underneath. I'm shading like this as opposed to holding it straight up like that, if that makes any difference. If that makes sense to you. So uh, let's get a little bit more of a half tone in there. Um, so you can see. I'm just taking my time. That's the patience I was talking about. You see? And um, I have a little bit of shading here. I think I'm going to grab the um, 2 H pencil. Get some light tones here. I want to work really light. I could always go back with the kneaded eraser, but I try to avoid that. I try to see how much can I get done without erasing anything. And I want to show the ball against the background, not by an outline, but there really isn't an outline there. But just by one value against a different value. I am going back and forth, but I'm moving forward, so I'm not staying in one place. I'm kind of moving this way as I Shade that. But you can see how see how the three dimensional quality is starting to come. Now this is kind of a hard edge right here, so I'm going to soften that a little bit. Reflected light, by the way, is light compared to the other values inside the shadow mass. It's not light compared to the light mass. Now you can see I'm holding it closer. Because I want to get a little bit darker along that bottom edge there. So 
what are you thinking? Is this helping you guys? Do you understand how I'm doing the cross hatching? As you can see I could keep developing it. This is a little bright. I want that to be the brighter. So I'm going to go over all this a little bit right now. So basically what you're doing is you have, I'm doing parallel lines and I'm not worrying how if they're all exactly evenly spaced. Okay? So I'm doing light. Light, airy line. I can turn the paper and go in a different direction. The other thing I do is I rotate my pencil, not as I'm working, but I know when I'm doing it one way, all these, I got a flat point on the pencil. I rotate it so I'm back at a sharp point. Okay. Well, thank you for watching. I hope this helps. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me at studio at timothychambers.com or visit my site, timothychambers.com.